Today we're going to be looking at a series of nuclear themed videos that are on a certain short form video sharing site. Starting with this video that says looking at this would end you. I'm going to show you a picture of something that would unalive you just by looking at it. You ready? Unalive. Don't say I didn't warn you because this is the elephant's foot. Nickname there we given go. to the leftover radioactive uranium lava flow in the basement of the Chernobyl nuclear plant. After uranium lava flow. So what this actually is, is interesting. It is the unholy mass of melted nuclear fuel, so he's right that uranium is involved in it, though the parts that are actually the most radioactive are the fission products. Certain fission products like cesium-137 or strontium-90 are far more radioactive than uranium in terms of raw activity, but it's molten. Chernobyl was the most infamous nuclear accident Ever. They broke their reactor. They broke their fuel. They broke their reactor coolant system. So as a result, the fuel overheated and melted and even melted bits and pieces of the reactor vessel and of the reactor coolant system. So it's this mash of bits of fuel, reactor vessel, coolant piping, all kinds of stuff. It is very unnatural and very radioactive. Tragic catastrophe in 1986. Melting through meters of solid steel and concrete before settling and cooling on the floor here. So that one picture he showed there, there have been times where Corium was actually created in a controlled laboratory setting. Chernobyl was not one of those examples. Flying into a two-ton block of what is possibly the deadliest form of matter to ever exist. Uh, depends what you mean by deadliest form of matter. Um, I would say the raw bits of fuel, and if it had not fused with the, uh, the concrete, the steel, the alloys, and the reactor vessel, it would be even more radioactive and more deadly. All that stuff was not radioactive, so it effectively dilutes it to a point. And there's a lot of it, and you can... You can survive being around it for a limited period of time. So compared to something where just a little bit would kill you, like a botulinum toxin, it's not that deadly. But I would certainly not want to give this thing a big hug. Corium, emitting enough radiation for a lethal dose in humans by simply just standing next to it for over 200 seconds. The equivalent of 4.5 million chest x-rays all up. So the actual dose rate is on the order of 10,000 rem per hour, which is a lot, considering it's 10 times the amount that you would need to receive a lethal dose, a guaranteed lethal dose. So him saying 200 seconds could kill you, yeah, that's, that's highly possible. It was so bad that even cameras got destroyed when they got too close to it, so they had to put them on chairs and wheel them around the corner just to even take these pics. Almost everyone who took photos too close to it unfortunately didn't live for much longer. The graininess and... There were cases of people taking pictures of this elephant's foot and living. I still wouldn't recommend it. Missing pixels of the photos are actually caused by the gamma radiation physically eating through the film reel. The elephant... Now, the radiation caused some of the graininess, but the ghostly bit is likely due to the shutter speed. Elephant's foot has since been barricaded inside the Chernobyl plant with steel and concrete enclosures. No. So what you're seeing there is the new safe confinement thing that looks like a hanger over their initial confinement sarcophagus. And that adds a much bigger layer of protection to what's left of Chernobyl. That sarcophagus that was hastily built after the accident was never intended to be a long-term solution. As a Chernobyl sarcophagus, and is expected to remain radioactive for the next couple hundred years. With Chernobyl as a whole to be uninhabitable for at least 20,000 more years. Whoa, that came out of nowhere. Chernobyl's not uninhabitable. <laughs> people have gone into the Chernobyl exclusion zone, into Pripyat. Some people still live in the general vicinity. And I have no idea where 20,000 years is coming from. That's way off. Man, until he said that, I was going to say his video wasn't really that bad. This one's by Isodope. Interesting name. Clear energy is clean energy. energy. This is okay. Clear. Yeah. No, not this one. This one. Most power plants make electricity by heating water and creating steam. <laughs> Nuclear power plants get heat from splitting atoms. This is how it all goes down. This is the reactor score. We're all thus far pretty accurate. Yeah, nuclear just uses a steam cycle like any other power plant, uh, coal or like coal or natural gas, and power plants have been doing for the past couple of hundred years. And this happens. In there is a nuclear fuel. Uranium pellets. <laughs> this voice. Bears. Imagine that these aliens with cowboy hats are uranium pellets. Pretend that my head is a neutron. Hi. Hey. Neutrons are. That's slightly terrifying, but I'm I'm with you. 
very sassy. The reactor releases neutrons and they smash into uranium atoms. That makes the atom unstable and it splits into two. This process is called <laughs> nuclear fission. fission. It releases a lot of energy and more sassy neutrons, which smash into other aliens with cowboy hats over and over and over again. That I mean, that's basically the principle. A few interesting details is each one makes more than two neutrons on a typical uranium-235 nucleus. And it's even possible for them to split into more than two pieces. Though that's a bit more rare, but think of any fission reaction, especially on this scale, producing electricity as a massive probability function. Called a chain reaction. <laughs> that energy sure. is used to heat water and create steam, which spins a turbine and woof. You what? have emissions-free electricity. So That's true. That's one key advantage of uh, nuclear power. No carbon emissions. What you see coming out of those cooling towers is water vapor. But I mean when I say nuclear, nuclear energy, energy is clean, clean energy. energy. Yeah, that was a very colorful and different way of explaining it, but that was pretty accurate. Well done. <laughs> I've never heard an explanation quite like that, but that's awesome. This one deals with how to survive a nuclear explosion. A nuclear bomb has detonated. You are located just outside the blast radius. You've only got 15 minutes before fallout reaches you. Okay, just outside the blast radius. So I'm going to assume by blast they mean the, the shock wave, the pressure shock wave. So it depends on the size of this weapon, but... You might actually have more than 15 minutes because before any radioactive plume comes your way because this this extends pretty far away from the actual nuclear explosion. Now there are various levels outside the blast. There's the lethal the lethal blast radius where we're talking the overpressure will just shatter your bones or throw you through a building or something like that. And then there's the non-lethal one where it would just injure you, but out of the blast radius, so you're you're pretty far away. For a typical, say, 400 kiloton airburst nuclear weapon, you're going to be about 15 kilometers away. That might be where they're getting 15 minutes from. But fallout could depend just as much on, on the weather as, as anything else, which way the wind happens to be blowing. How you would know that immediately after the bomb goes off, I have no idea. Because <laughs> obviously the bomb's powerful enough it's going to affect the weather too, at least in the immediate vicinity. It's okay, just fall to six S's of nuclear fallout survival. <laughs> it's okay. One, shelter in the right kind of building. Go to the nearest concrete or brick building you can find, ideally with few or no windows. Why is he taking this clothes off? sanitize your body, put all clothes into a bag, place at the front door, take a shower with warm water. He said the fallout hasn't hit yet. This is what you would do if you were already under the effects of fallout. You would you would want to decontaminate, and a shower is one thing that would that could help. There are decontamination showers in radiological controlled areas. But if the fallout hasn't hit, I mean, the shower wouldn't really do anything additionally than normally taking a shower. Wash your entire body. Keep cuts covered with plastic while showering. And that's so you don't get any internal contaminations in there. Yeah, there are special uh, decontamination procedures. If you were to get contaminated, say, at a radiological controlled area, that would want to account for cuts, any, any entry points for contaminants to enter the body. And that's because internal dose is so much worse than external dose, especially with things like alpha particles that won't penetrate the skin very much. If, if you have, say, surface contamination on your arms, legs, extremities, but if taken internally, they would do way, way more damage to your body, like by a factor of 20 or more, because you don't have your skin to protect you. Three, secure windows and doors. Close and lock all windows, seal them with duct tape, turn off AC units, fans, etc. All openings to the outside world must be covered. After a few hours, remove the duct tape. I was going to say, you're not doing this in 15 minutes. <laughs> that takes a while. You can try, but I wouldn't. Th this probably isn't going to be worth your time because... Small amounts of particulate matter would get in there. However, radioactive gases, depending on what it is, like xenon is a noble gas, you'll just inhale it and exhale it. So that's one you don't really have to worry about. But this, I wouldn't focus on this aspect. Just, just go ahead and get your supplies at this point. You could suffocate due to lack of ventilation. Yeah, don't do that. That's or, so definitely not worth it. Take 72 hours worth of water, medication, first aid kit, radio, flashlight, batteries, and also bags for waste. Five, choose the right space. Get to a windowless room near the middle of the building, away from the outer walls, or go to a basement. Windows would be good if you knew like the blast, the shockwave was coming. The same way you'd protect yourself from a tornado. Here, we're just going through areas that are less likely to get the um, contaminants there. 
So the whole barricading doesn't really do much because it's really against uh, particulate matter that's going to be the most hazardous to you rather than radioactive gases, like I said earlier. But yeah, it's entirely possible, given your timeline, you might even get more dose from the act of trying to duct tape all of your stuff rather than just taking the immediate time to go to a windowless room or a basement or something like that, assuming you don't have an actual fallout shelter. Rooms close to the roof because fallout collects on roofs. Six. I mean, yeah, fallout, rain, anything from the sky, sure. In place for 72 hours. The longer you wait, the more radiation will lessen. 72 hours is ideal. Okay. I mean, that is true. Dose rate can go down by as much of a factor of 103 days. So I can understand that stuff. I'm Kiram, and this is the Master of Disaster. Series. Master Disaster. Instagram. All right, well, Master of Disaster, that one wasn't bad. I would just... And he even brought it up. I would just question the, the step of trying to secure with, with duct tape. You're better off just waiting the three days for dose rates to go down anyway. And for this last one, we're not even going to try to survive it. We're just going to see what the nuclear bomb feels like. <laughs> All right. This is terrifying. Oh, boy. And you're blind. <laughs> you would see the explosion far earlier than you would hear it, just because light travels that much faster than the speed of sound. Note that the actual reaction, ancient history by the time you see the fireball. There's a unit of measure for the speed of nuclear reactions called the shake. A shake is 100 nanoseconds. So by the time the beam of light travels from the explosion, and can reach your eyeball, presumably, I don't know, 20 kilometers away, however far you are from this thing, that reaction's ancient history, especially the prompt neutrons. The prompt neutrons show up as early as 10 to the minus 15 seconds. Might as well be considered instantaneous for all practical purposes. Next thing you should see would be the thermal pulse, so that vegetation catching fire. Yep, there it is. Then the shock wave. There it goes. And that wind's going several thousand miles per hour. How this person would still be standing at this point. Yeah. If the thermal pulse didn't kill you at this range by just being engulfed in flame, that shock wave would have definitely finished you off. And now you're seeing the mushroom cloud. Note that everything you'd see and experience at this distance would be true of any high-yield device. It doesn't have to be nuclear. It could be the explosion from a volcanic eruption, a asteroid impact event, thing that creates a big explosion on the order of hundreds of kilotons to megatons. And this mushroom cloud is just buoyancy when you have something that high-yield. I mean, thus far, it's decent with this rendition of it. Not sure it really portrays what it feels like, but that would be quite horrific. I, I get the gist of it, though. Is that going to be it? Yeah, just showing the mushroom cloud grow. Okay. I like that they captured the brightness of it, because it, it would be quite bright. That's something you don't always see in these portrayals, and, and it'd be even brighter than that, but they, but they just want to show what, what it was like to see everything catch fire and then the shockwave coming. I still think it would the effects would be even stronger, but in order to make it look like you have a video doing it, I can totally understand why they did what they did. Overall, some bits and pieces of these were pretty good these TikToks overall. Though I mainly just grabbed the highlights of a few different popular categories on TikToks, things involving nuclear power, do radiation dose, and of course nuclear weapons. Let me know if there's any particular TikTok you want to see me react to though. I'm sure there's, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there if you want to go down that well. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.